Good evening everyone. How are you? Have you had a good day? It's lovely to see you. I um, This is like the calm after the storm <laughs> this evening. There's been so much going on today and uh, I just want to thread up my machine before we get started because I had I had a few different things that I wanted to show you this evening to just to do, you know, just have a little bit of fun with some techniques and um, some of the fabrics that we've recently got in and some new ones and it's a little bit of a little bit of a luxury doing um, Thursday night after the big mad show that Emma and I did on Tuesday. So I just wanted to pop some metallic gold thread in my machine and then um, we can we can get started. Oh who is here this evening? So who have I got? Hello Robin and Kate. Hi um, Louise and Kathy. thank you for joining me. Good evening Christine. Um, and Diane says good evening everybody. Oh that's lovely. Thank you. Um, Anne Beecroft's here too. And Louise I saw your note. Yes my faux pas in translating my imperial into more simplistic things called pounds. I forgot to change it to pounds. So thank you very much for that. Cuss is fixing that up at the moment in a quarter's life. But I'm very happy with how that tomato chutney came out today. Um, Marie, good evening. And Yvonne, lovely to see you. It is an eclectic set tonight. Um, you're absolutely right. That's a very nice way to call a dog's breakfast, actually, <laughs> Diane. But you'll see, you'll see why when I get there. So um, I can already tell you, next week's is planned uh, with Emma. And it's all very, you know, what's the word? On point. On point is that the term I think so good evening Anne and Sylvia um, Bernadette's here yeah it's brilliant you can join us live Kate from the UK that is fantastic and that's that's the beauty of doing a Thursday evening one it means that you can uh, catch up with us Tiki how are things in the Gerties this evening Nancy hi oh Joan Joan I hope you're talking about the set and not me. So I had my grey shirt out that I do wear and I had another one out that I wear and it's too hot so I'm actually disguising the good old singlet top underneath the scarf. Good evening Kay, you made it onto Facebook. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, sorry, Kay leaves joining us this evening. I think for the first time. Sharon, hi. How are things over in Keezy? Sharon. Uh, Richard had the Lint Chocolate Factory outlet open Saturday and Sunday and it's way too early before Easter. I just thought you'd like to know that. Judy, good evening to you. I see you're doing some serious bag making at the moment. Sue's here. Karen's here. Rose is here. Good evening all. Lois, oh my goodness, you're all here. Janelle's gone. <laughs> Janelle's gone for the large letters, so I pay attention. I feel like I want to yell. Hello, Janelle. Thank you for joining us this evening. Hi Val, how are things down in Bayside? Oh, Jackie. I'm glad you like the scarf, Diane. There are only two left uh, in the building. This one's now mine. I, you know, we run a very tight ship here, yet I still every now and then find something. So one is for me, and the other one, I think Mom, I think I had one and Mum's got it. I don't know but anyway this one's mine and the other one will be the door price from now until next week's Tuesday show so there's two of them and one's mine and one will be a prize um Rosemary Maggie Kristen oh, look at you all gorgeous girl Cheryl hello oh you got your be mindful today Fiona awesome you're most welcome Sharon wait for the updated version <coughs> Elizabeth is here. You're all hey, why are you all here? Oh, there's no Natasha today, is there? She's off on the she's off on T V today, isn't she? I think she's she is, she's off doing T V. Um for Australian girls there is such a thing as a twenty four hour craft channel in the UK. There's actually two. Catherine You're going out for dinner? Well that's lovely. Go, go, go. Don't be late. Francis. Michelle, good evening. Michelle, I did make chutney today and it actually worked. Hello, Donna, and hello in the UK. Oh, oh, look at you all. Okay, I'm going to come back and talk to you later because we really, we really need to get going. Who's here? Jeanette's here from South Australia. Florrie is here. Cheryl. Aww. 
What have you got? You've, oh, I love a Canadian club. Let's start talking what we're drinking, shall we, Melissa? Um, this is not Canadian club. This is Diet Bundaberg ginger beer, but Canadian club all the way. Love your taste. But it's another hot night in Melbourne. It just goes on and on. So, um, suck it in, let the scarf on. Okay. So, what I would like to go through this evening, and I have got my little numbers of orders and things to go through so that we can give away uh, a few prizes as well this evening but i want to do a little re it's a little bit of a recap but then applying um and looking at some of the new fabrics that we've actually got in so if you remember oh no robbie <laughs> i forgot to put up the top camera uh oh how are we going to do this You're without the girls and which, so which which camera? We'll go to camera three, and then can you get me the ladder? Because I don't want the girls to know what's on my legs. Not much. I have got shorts on, but they're not not for not for general viewing. Hang on a minute. Which so, camera do you want? Are, are we going to go to three go to like that? Way. No, no, I'm going to this one. They, no, are you going? Which way are you going? Oh, you're going around the front. I oh, should go from this way. Okay, so. <laughs> well, we were so focused on we've had a camera come back from being repaired so we were all a bit excited about that and we forgot about the top one this do you remember this we did this a few weeks to a cast is two weeks ago but i feel like it was longer maybe three we had our little doves in love promotion it is just three wasn't it because we did it for Val around valentine's day too far i haven't seen at all Oh, well then you need to zoom out. It's it, no other way. Sorry, just technical issue. That's it. Any further, and they'll see my shorts. Beautiful. Thank you. Not oh, you went back. Okay, that'll have to do. It did it. Did it. Did it. All right. So we did this, and then we teamed it up with a lovely pack. Now I've got the other one. There we go. We teamed it up with. Um, these lovely blue and golds that came in it's going to be so professional this evening okay that's gone out the window so this okay. is the pack this is the pack that we've got that are fat eights like this so these are all gorgeous they're all timeless treasures they're all blue and gold um, we were down to one and I've done a fresh set of stock with them today. That's a big thing. It's not just a case of chopping them up. I have to make sure for those of you that are buying it by the half metre that there's enough for that as well. So a couple of them are down to about a metre, two metres left on the bolt, but I have allowed enough for these. So with this fat eighth pack, we started shopping. This is my pack. You can, we started shopping bits and pieces out to start a little project with our little birds and we did send out this little diagram for everyone that bought this pack and we're doing that again now um, with anything that we do tonight really because it's sort of it's all going to just sort of uh, blend around around these little guys and we're going to use them as an example I'm seeing what you're writing and you're absolutely right they are beautiful blues and it was just so nice to get them in with the gold again and I mean I'm I did silver with summer palace in blue but they have a warmth to them that's really lovely so and I've got a couple of new ones to show you so this is what we started doing and I've used one two three four one two yeah three four five I used five of the different prints in here you've actually got eight so I used five you know, I, I used this little smaller one here because I thought based on the scale of the wings would be good and I used this more open design for the actual bird bodies. So that worked really well. Um, and of course it's that whole lovely blue birdie thing going on. But I'm going to use these a lot um, over the next few months to demonstrate a few different things um, because I just think they're, it's from the original applique sampler. So what I actually um, plan on doing now is setting them into uh, a larger panel or block. 
and I'm going to use uh, one of the blues to create a border around it and then I have my heart set on using some of my elongated um, octagon lozen shape EPP templates to do some little flowers in corner blocks so I thought I'll just start that off tonight and show you what I'm talking about I am so so sorry as well for those that are waiting on the blue ginger block kit I literally you know it went away with um, me when we went to the more craft a live show and I was working on it there and it got popped into a bag with those Japanese fan bag kits and everything that are and it just got sat in the corner and they fell off my running to-do list so I need to come back to those and um, finish them off for you because I know some of you wanted the blue one rather than the red um, and I think they fell off the list too because they were remember I was originally going to send um, Oh, Joan, oh, I've just seen your note. Uh, I was going to send it off to Spain. We've had so much trouble trying to get stock out to Maria at Field of Fada in Spain for the show there in a couple of weeks because of FedEx, because of COVID, now because of flooding and because of Ukraine and Russia limitations on flights. So we're now just trying to get two boxes of fabric to her um, without it costing uh, the price of a small car, pretty much. So and that's where we're at. Now what I've done with these, I just want to show you as well, what I decided to do was back this with just a really, the finest palin that we had. So this is 630. It's new camera. Let's see how we go. Oh, fixed up camera. Let's see how we go. There we are. <laughs> back to four cameras. Emma and I get confused with three, right? So that's going to be hilarious Tuesday. So you can see it's just a really nice fine one and the reason I want to use this one is I'm still going to come back and back the whole project later with a thicker batting. So this is just going to give my uh, bird panel, if you like, a little bit of a little bit of oomph and a little bit of stability while I actually blanket stitch on my birds. So I've decided <laughs> to go with metallic gold thread to blanket stitch uh, and it would have been really good if I picked that stitch there we go so I'm just going to run with the default setting blanket stitch that's on my machine which is 2.6 long and 2.3 based on the scale of this I know we've talked a lot about blanket stitch when we've been talking about um, the be mindful quilt and what size to use let's get my scissors and for this, I'm quite happy. Just get my little scissors out and cut that thread. I'm quite happy with the normal default setting. So I just want to do a little bit of this to show you. Oh, I knew you play up when I just started. Don't play up. Why are you playing up? We'll just do a little bit. I threw the bobbin in. Oh. You know what it is? I know exactly what's going on. I'm going to tell you and I'm going to... Oh, do you know I'm going to tell you what I did? I was sewing something that I'm going to show you tonight as a great tip and I wasn't paying attention. I don't even know if I'll be able to fix this now in time to show you. Um, you there, Rob? Could you just go out to the, no, it's up here, this is it, up here. I thought it was, I thought I had adhesive on my needle. Can you go into the office and see if I've left the little plastic disc that goes on here? Do you know what they look like? Yeah. Um, I went off, I went off grid and um, sewed through some adhesive tape. And I did notice when I set up tonight that I actually had a little bit of glue. Yeah, one of them, thanks. A little bit of glue on my needle and that will just play absolute havoc with uh, your machine, as it just has done now, I think. If I can't do this without taking all night, I will leave it and come back. Anyway, what I'm going to do is blanket stitch because when you get thread stuck in your machine, like that, <laughs> you really have to be careful. There's more there, so. Yeah, there is. 
Oh, 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 oh. Well, this went to plan, didn't it? This really... <gasps> Can you press... No, that's all right. They don't... I'm not even... No, I'm not showing the girls that. Let's hope Nathan's not watching. This would be a good time to say that um, <laughs> my dealership is expiring at the end of the month. And probably a good thing too. All right, pop that back in. Remember, if you have a banana, you need to shut the front door or the machine will stop and beep at you. Now, I'm just going to try this again. Oh my goodness. Oh, look, there we go. Can you, oh, I thought you were going to push it for me. You're standing there in front of camera too, but you're just not. Did you use this one? I'm using that one now. There we go. Doesn't it work well and everything's running smoothly. All right, so the normal default setting is great for the bird bodies, but when you actually um, get to the smaller pieces, I actually would suggest just dropping down the stitch length and the width because it's going to be a little bit of a challenge, as this is going to be, to get around the tight curves. Just want to do down to the next wing. Yeah, you need to. Yeah, yeah, you do. Need, maybe drop it a little bit, girls. Um, if you are in a quilter's life as well, remember you've already got this little pattern. We've popped it up for you, so you can use it any time you like. Please. Let me pop this up here and I can give you a look. So you can just see I've just started, just done that little one there. And the gold actually works um, because there's gold in the fabric. So it's going to highlight a little bit, but it's not going to, it's not going to overpower, it's not going to overpower the design. Hi Jill! Uh, saw your message at five minutes to live and I think Robert was actually going to attempt to um, fix that for you on a website he hasn't really played with so that'll be interesting and don't worry about it we'll, it'll be fine we'll fix it up for you um, and so this little pack just to show you again this is this pack that's really gorgeous now I do have to apologize to you just a little bit because there are terms that we use in-house here that we I've realized we've started using when we're talking to you and it's a bit unfair because it may not make sense to you so we've been using the t oh good good Jill uh, we've been using the term tag and that would absolutely make no sense to you whatsoever but what it is is that um, the little banner that we put across the top of the website before a show is called uh, when we go in and mark products it's called tagging them so when we say we've tagged something I do apologize you don't have to go looking for a tag you just have to click that banner at the top and then I have put this little tag word which is I think we're on show 29 tonight in and um, to all of those products and we set it up so that's what so I'm so sorry because someone said to me the other day what's a tag I mean, oh, that's so so embarrassing. Anyway, they are under the, tonight's banner, so when you click on the banner, it's, it's there for you. Um, just to show you one of the prints that I really love as well, it's probably the biggest one in that group of eight, is this one. And it's just, it's lovely. If you want to find all of them by the meter or the half yard increments to buy instead of in the pack, the range is called Fleur, as in Flower Fleur, F E. F-L-E-U-R. So if you put in Fleur, it will bring all of them up. And this one is is probably, yeah, I've got a couple of, I, lo I love them all, but this is probably the largest print. So what I actually want to do, once I've got this um, border done, sorry, the blanket stitch done, 
I actually want to add a border. Now, uh, it does it does kind of work to go straight from the cream straight onto this particular print. That will be fine, but I can't help feeling that it needs a little paper, just a little paper in here. So I've pulled out a couple of options this evening to have a look at with you and just to see what we think. So I pulled out, I just pulled out one of our shadow plays and you can see I can do that and it's going to add a little paper but it's going to make it quite dark. So maybe not with this one, actually to pull that out to go with something else. And one of the other options that I can look at is the gorgeous Regent Fusions in the gold and so that would add quite a bit of warmth to it but it's getting quite yellow. So I think I think what I'm going to do is actually use just another one from the Fat Eighth pack or one of the other ones. So there is this gorgeous little scroll here that's in the pack and I think I'm going to use that, yeah I'm just going to do that just as a little paper. So I may not even paste it in, I think what I will do is cut the strip of this um, one inch wide and fold it in half, pretty much like you can see it now and then when I actually sew these two together I'll sandwich a little pleat of this in between and that will just give me a nice little, just a nice little break. Yes there are Nancy, there are blue packs um, still available, absolutely. Uh, there are more today, I put up more today. So if you can't see them just email me afterwards and I can send you the link or check it for you, that's fine. So I think that will work. I'm going to do my, this fabric though, just the length and the and the width of the block and add in the corners I'm going to add in uh, I'm definitely definitely going to add in some more squares of my white because I've just been looking for an excuse if I just sit this like this for you I've been looking for an excuse to do some flowers with these So these are, we always have fun trying to look at these don't we, because <laughs> they're clear and they're shiny and they just don't show up. Let's have a go. Oh, good, got extra cameras now. Ooh, okay. So can you see those? Oh yes, you can see those. See, they're all shiny. That's great. So this shape is really lovely. So you can line them all up in a lattice work like we do with the octagons that works really well but what I want to do with them here is set them on point so when this when this all goes together and I've got this fabric up here as well um, sitting up here I want them to sit on point in the shape of a flower let's not do the overheads a bit nope can't see a thing I hold that in a little bit of an angle. Can you just see them there? So they're going to sit as a flower like that. There's something about this particular shape that I think will work really well because the the blue's kind of heading towards that Dutch kind of feel to it. So um, that's what I think I'll do. Right. So let's let's just cut some of these down. I'm going to use my favourite, my fave fave, in the small ones. The other really nice thing about working with these shapes and the octagon shapes is that you can rotary cut um, your pieces up first to use. Uh, it could very well be Diane and um, Rob's going to be devastated if it is. <laughs> so if it does it again let me know and I will switch it, we'll switch over. Maybe I better switch over now if it's flickering. Top one, I've had it on all afternoon and it's flickering. Let's see that one to Sydney as well, Rob. Alright, so these little shapes here are one and a half wide and if I just, I'm just going to go over, I sort of want two inches so that I've got a really nice generous seam allowance to go around the piece. So 
run that up there and then they are two and three quarter long so I'm going to need at least at least at least I lay that on there there we go a good three a really good three I think that's two and a half yeah I'm going to go to three I just want to show you what I mean because these are really, really good. In fact, you know, look, watch this. Let's just be, let's just do a Lisa and just wing it. Right. Then it is, they are really easy to work with. If you don't want to cut your corners off, you don't have to. Um, blue pen. Now, if any of you are watching tonight and you haven't used um, a glue pen, for cool Jill thank you this is the way to set yourself up so just in case I always make the assumption you've all got one and then that's wrong <laughs> so this is how we this is how they come and you get a spare glue stick with the first one and then we also well, we or whoever also um, you can get so line refills uh, I think we've got them in packs of six so I use just a bit of glue to hold it down in the middle because these ones um, you can glue or you uh, can tack. I like to tack. Now, Melissa, are you on tonight? Melissa's a very much a Epiplex EPP girl and she informed me that you can um, kind of give them a little bit of a little bit of a rinse, a little bit of dab of water and it will release the glue but I still find that uh, I like to tack mine. I'm just going to do two. Alright, so I'll just grab some cotton and we'll just tack one of these so you can see what they look like. And then we'll glue the other one. How's that sound? Oh, we didn't, we didn't talk, um, Emma and I always get off uh, air and then we go, Oh, we didn't say this and we didn't say that and we didn't and we had all these things lined up in a basket for Tuesday which we now call Silly Tuesday because it really was we get a bit silly um, for the Chewy Checkout because I love my Chewy Checkout uh, being all the things that you pick up at the checkout that do not make that much difference to the bottom line and or it definitely what's not going to make any difference to the cost of your postage and um, we had all this stuff already and one of them was cotton again this week so um, my faves are 971 and 977 for my off-white and my black and it's just it's just so frustrating if you run out of cotton and these cost you know nine dollars to send one because of the thickness of them but that's not going to cost anything so just always remember that when you when you're finishing up just check the supply of cotton of pins all those little things can you see what I'm doing there okay oh, I'll come back a bit for you so I'm just folding over the edge and yes I am left-handed sorry about that oops well, I'm not sorry but I haven't got the reverse, haven't got the reverse camera. Okay, so it's just normal tacking like you do with hexagons. Um, I just do a little back stitch on each corner. You have got longer sides on these pieces, but I find that they are just, you know, they're manageable, just a little bit of a finger press. I'm actually going to take some paper piecing with me uh, tomorrow morning. I have morning tea tomorrow with Karen Stiles from Somerset Patchwork and Margaret Upston from Margaret's Fabrics from Druin. And we are putting the finishing touches on the details for our upcoming Needlecrafter soiree. So if you haven't heard that gossip yet, it will be on the 14th and 15th. There are two one day events of May at the in Garfield at a hall. 
So we're finalising all of that up and I will have more details for you shortly. And tickets will be available through Eventbrite. The gorgeous Cash, Cass, who was, had her satellite going in and out today and had to run and grab the kids <laughs> before, the, before the bridge is shut with flooding up in New South Wales. Um, but we'll finalise all that up and get those details ready for you really, really quickly. So there you go. I've tacked that one on. Now, love the shape. Love it. It does have a little bit of an oriental feel to it as well. But you can see what I mean, that four of those together set on points going to give us a really nice um, finish. Yes, I am, Mandy, still going to have a Celtic Bomb. Absolutely. Lock of the month. Yes. Yes, yes, and yes. And, and Natasha's bugging me too, so absolutely. All right, with this one, uh, you, if I was actually to tack this as well, you can see it will work if you don't want to trim off the edges. You're just going to have more underneath. Um, but just so that we can have a quick look, I'm going to snip these. And, you know, it's nice and small, it's manageable. You don't really need to mark it on. So I'm going to sit that there and I will just press these, sorry, glue these over so that you can see. I might put this one on again. You can see how quick it is to glue, but as I said, you can have a little bit of a problem getting the template out. So with my Christmas dish project, we leave them in, of course, but no, Fiona, not yet. It will all come out and we'll put it in newsletter and Facebook with links to um, the Eventbrite booking site. So we will, we're actually going to have a company do the bookings for us. So don't worry, it'll be out as soon as we can. So can you see that? That's how they're going to look. So I'll have another two down here. And so I'll have a little flower made up. We actually put on the pack um, some little examples, if I just put this out and show you. You can see that there. So this is what I'm out to create, this little shape here to set on point. So, I mean, I could do a whole little border, couldn't I have these right round? Heavens, too many choices, absolutely too many choices. But hopefully that just sort of gives you an idea of what you can do. And as I said, we'll be sending out one of those with our orders from this week and um, making sure that you've got everything you need to make one up. Either in these, or I'll show you a couple of show you a couple of others. I need to leave that diagram out. So we'll pop this one back up here so you can have a look at it. Like that. And actually, I should be good and put these back up here. The <laughs> You make it all nice and tidy and then I, I walk out after a show and I come back in and it's like, okay, okay. There's been a cyclone, there's been a cyclone. All right, now I want to set this machine out of the way. It was a very short brief time this evening, 475. Though you're not in the, it's not in the naughty corner because that was definitely operator error. I'll just pop this over here. Oi. You got it? Thanks. So I'll pop that down and that will be me later. We might need that again. I'll leave that there. I'm very conscious of the singlet top. Okay. Oh, bits and pieces everywhere. All right. So other things that we can do with our bluebirds or our doves in love um, are here as well. Now, in terms of blues, we've also got a couple of other new ones. We actually put them up last week, and I don't know if any of you saw them, but, 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 but um, they're gorgeous, and they're just slightly different, just slightly different to our first lot. These ones are called Isabel, and if you have a look, they've got a real, they've got a little bit of a William Morris look about them, haven't they? You see that? Gorgeous. Um, I'm going to just lay this down here so you can have a look. How, how do we get this messy this week? I don't understand. Right. Okay, so there we go. There's a nice shot of that one. Look at that. 
So this is really interesting too because it's got a real traditional English William Morris look about it. My girls in the UK will probably say, Lisa, you are stereotyping us. Absolutely. But, you know, can't help it. Can't help it. It has got that look. But the difference is we've got little splotches of metallic gold. And that just gives it just a lovely little lift and brings it into the realm of those other ones that we first looked at. It's got a couple of friends. And I love this one. This one is with the grey. So you can see there's the dark one there and this one's the grey. Such an unusual colour and it, it is really, really special. So that one. <laughs> and then I started playing because you know that I love doing that. So I got out, you know, one of its obviously if I think it's William Morris Liberty ish, I got the Liberty out and then there's the Liberty smoke with it. This, I don't know if you can really see it on the camera. Grey is just one of those colours that's hard to get right. It works. They go together beautifully. So really unusual from that perspective because also at the same time you can do this. Which you would not think, but because of the yellow gold that's in here, this works as well with that one and also with the blue. And as um, as we've found with just so many fabrics lately as well, what do I do with it? It's gone down here. The um, This beautiful Liberty goes, why can I not remember your name? Midnight. So if I do that, see what I mean? So you've got this gorgeous thing and the gold's picked up and then this is for the dark. So they all go really nicely together. Um, and I have... Um, I've popped them under tonight's banner, I won't say tag, I've popped them under tonight's banner so that you can have a look. So this is, this, 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 this is another option if you like the idea of the bluebirds, doves in love, I keep bluebirds, well they are blue aren't they because I did them in blue. But have a think about it another way around for me, just, just have a little think. If you were to make a bag and this was your center panel then perhaps you could have a little bit of a play because this would make a gorgeous tote bag and you could pop bluebells oh, blue doves in love bluebirds onto the gray as a panel in it or onto the blue um, and you could use some of this fabric to actually do them or you could you could grab uh, the grey one instead and use that for the lining and then use some of that to do the birds onto the dark blue. If you're having trouble working out what I'm talking about, Lisa, what on earth are you talking about? I'm going to throw something really in to make the whole standard dog's breakfast. But have a look at this bag. So if you were thinking about using the birds for a panel on a bag, so you probably wouldn't do white, that's why I'm saying grey or dark blue would be really good. Pop the birds on here and then your actual bag would come out of this. So if this, you know, these guys are really pretty and they're really cute for book covers, for cushions, for little things, but if you set them onto a dark background then all of a sudden you've got a design that would look really, really nice on the front of a, <laughs> what are you all on about? On the on the front of the bag and then I look down and I go, what, what are you all talking about? Absolutely Melissa, I see I see William Morris. Uh, looks like little 3D, it does, it does Sylvia, they look like little 3Ds. No Lynette, I can't come to Bendigo Craft Alive. Um, I was, I was coming, I was definitely doing it. Have plans, it's a long weekend. I don't want to break my plans. So yeah, not at the moment. I know Brett's going to kill me because I said I'd go, but um, it is a long weekend, so I do do hope they get enough people go with it's uh, being Queen's birthday weekend. If there is a change in that, I will definitely, definitely let you know. But we might come down, we might come down your way and see you, maybe with one of our little events. So um, we might do that. We have, we sort of, 
We're very nervous and very tentative about doing the first one. And then we have plans. Um, if any of you are up northern Victoria way, we are looking, we, we have found a venue to come up your way as well. So I will let you know when we, when we get ourselves organised where the second one will be. There will be a lot of, there will be a lot of coffee tomorrow morning. Maybe cake. I'm not sure what we will see. Alright, I've got one more to show you in this particular, oops, in this particular range. And again, a really unusual colourway, but it is gorgeous and it would look lovely. It would look lovely with black and it would look, it looks lovely with grey. So this is white with gold with grey. So, you know, the first thing I do is go looking, going, what, what, I have to have something with it. And I loved this with it. So this is our grey linen and it just, this works really well. So again, you can mess around with a tote bag or something with this. And I, to me, this is, I'm probably, I'm probably thinking more cushions with this. Is that top camera still flickering? It was before, wasn't it? It's, I've given it a minute. Let's see if I can get away with it for a tick. Rob came in to tell me and I gave him that. I know, I know. I know it's flickering. Okay. I just love this. Absolutely love it. Um, and there are a couple of other fabrics here that I thought were going to go. I'm going to tell you all about in a minute. But um, So you could put the grey with this. You could stitch the birds out in white and pale grey onto this or a dark grey. And it would just be a really, really different look to it. Australian Applique Guild is having its first ever quilt show at the Bendigo Craft Alive. That is fantastic, Rosemary. I think you just did share. That's awesome. The bus trip. <laughs> Sharon, there will be... You crack me up. Um, bus trip, what, to Garfield? Or to Nagambi? <laughs> Margaret's going to kill me. I'm not supposed to be telling you anything. But you know, I'm not going to share. I'm going to share the love. Okay, I'm going to pop those back there. I want to show you one thing. Just, this is important to me that you know, because when I said it's really hard to show you greys, I'm going to show you two greys. I have not popped these under the banner, but I want to show them to you because grey is a very, very difficult colour. I, do you, do you remember this? This is so funny. This fabric came in and I went, it's too pale. What on earth is going on? They'd actually wound it onto the bolt back the front. Not funny, really. But have a look at how different all my greys are. Look at this. Look, look, look. Oh, you can't. Sorry. There you go. This is, this is, I don't know what this is. This is green. This is blue grey. And then this is the beautiful ombre that we have that's wound onto the bolt the wrong way. It stops it from fading. There you go. This is green grey. <laughs> and hello Kate. <laughs> Sharon Case, you're going anywhere on a bus. <laughs> this, I don't know, this is it's throwing pink now, so this is like a pink grey. They're all grey, but they've all got different tints. And this is, you know, why we um, admire our fellow quilters in Japan that work in top, because top is not top. There's pink top, blue top, green top. There's lots and lots of different tops. But there you go. They're all completely different. This gorgeous thing, though, and it is gorgeous. I need to get the other bolt out that is wound around the right way. Um, this is one of our gelato ombres and it's colour 904. This for a background, if you're doing an art quilt applique or anything, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. It's going to give you gorgeous tones. Gorgeous, gorgeous tones. Um, and this one is one of the last little bits we've got of sorbet. Uh, ombre as well. So this one is digitally printed and you can see it's got a much more gradual colour change. Also beautiful. And that was, it, because it's the digital printed, it's so soft, it's gorgeous. Um, one little phenomenon, phenomenon? Yes. 
for you. Uh, check this out. That is the last of our bolt of our um, Russian caravan elephants. But look, look at it with that grey. <laughs> and and it works. It works really, really well. Not so much that one, but the grey one. It's fantastic. Very different. All right. So the two other ways that I wanted to talk to you. Well, two. Yeah, yeah. Two other ways that I wanted to talk to you tonight about appliquing uh, your does in love are the classic oh well uh, one is the same as what we've just done but with boutiques and I want to talk about boutiques because they're a little bit different uh, I was talking to the applique sampler girls about it on our little Facebook club group and on a quilter's life this week that boutiques are fantastic um, because they are so tight and they don't fray and the front's the same as the back so they are really, really good if you are doing a raw edge applique. Now Emma and I are going to be running through a few different applique techniques by machine with what we're doing next Tuesday as well. So there's lots and lots to cover. We'll be on twin needles and monopoly and a few different applique techniques. So that'll be happening. But puts it on dark colour to show. Yes, exactly, Floria. Exactly. So this little pack here is what I also want to do my doves in. Why am I not? Oh, wrong way. Sorry. <laughs> Just again, I've got an extra camera. Go, what am I doing? There you go. So look at those. Pretty, pretty, pretties. I have put these up as well. I just love them together as um, a little pack this evening. It'll only be the Facebook show and I'll leave it up for about a week. Um, and uh, because it, it's all tying in with the trial that I want to show you. So, beautiful dark burgundy, dusky pink called Victoria, khaki and lavender. This is called, give me a minute, Sonoma, this one here. So I've actually listed the names of them under the pre-cut pack so that if you did want to get any more, you could. But what the cool thing is, because, hey Jim, because Steve's not here. Um, I've put them up as a pack, but if you order two, I'll cut it as one length for you. So if you ordered two lots, I'll cut it as four times 20 centimetres and so on. They, they're they not pre-cut yet, so I can do that. So the reason, I loved, I loved this idea of using them. Jenny, take your bell and go. <laughs> so what did you do to her? I just went. <laughs> so with this, birds, um, pink, wings are going to be the dark colour, I think, I'm pretty sure. Leaves, leaves, hearts in the lavender. Now they look a little bit, I will admit, they look a little bit dull, but I've got the, I've got the cool stuff to put them on. And I've got two, two, two new twelves, two new twelves. I can say that because I'm not having Canadian club. The first one is this one. So worried it's all going to come down on my head. This, this, this gorgeous thing. Am I up the right way? I think I'm up the right way. So this is called floral, it's floral labels I think. beautiful. This to me is a real, it is a real departure from, from what I usually see come through from Michael Miller. Um, uh, perfume labels, that's right. It is very different for what we've had recently from them, particularly, well for us at least. You know, Michael Miller is where we buy. <laughs> Diane, I'm getting to the big roll. <laughs> um, <laughs> I am making you hang for the big roll, aren't I? No, I'm just leading up to the big roll. It makes me nervous, the big roll. Um, this is, uh, you know, we, we get fairy frost. We get whites and brights from Michael Miller. So when I saw this, it was like, I oh, think they've got the label wrong. I don't think it's Michael Miller at my distributor, but it is really, really special. And, excuse me, going having a drink. Obviously, it's going to go with black. And black's going to make it really, really pop. 
but have a look at these over the top. So I'm not planning on using this that much for piecing. Sacrilege, I know, it just belongs in a bag and I've got something else that makes it belong in a bag. But I want to use it as a background to put things like this on or some roses or some lavender or some 3D because look it's got it's a, oh you can't see that one sorry it's got roses in it Ginny Sharon says she can hear you go away can you get the laser pointer on go go uh, it's also got little violets down here so we can do some violets so it's got lots and lots of different things going on. Can you see all of that? It's just, it's beautiful. I love it. I love it, love it. So that to me is one that I definitely want to use as a background as well as using it as a feature print all on its own. Now in terms of feature prints, up here, okay. I would love to make it up as a feature print all on its own or maybe just one maybe just one flower over the top with the gunmetal grey in the treasure tote frame so the gunmetal grey particularly looks beautiful with it so if you haven't seen one of the treasure totes made up before this one here on the floor so this is what the treasure tote looks like so sort of pop you out on that end that's it. So I think this would look gorgeous with this handle. This handle. Yummy. And um, it doesn't need anything else with it. I would just want the bag made up in that. So, and if you haven't seen those before, the actual, the, the handle comes with the pattern. All done. Ooh, now this with the antique gold ones as well. That would also look really nice. A big William Morrissey looking bag would look really good. So this would be great. But also remember, you know, you've got a very sort of simplistic panel construction to work with with this pattern when it comes through with the treasure tote frame. So you don't, you wouldn't have to have it all in the tile. You could actually split the panel and have a black section here and pop a little bit of applique or some stitchery onto this to complement the fabric. So that would also look really nice. And you've got little uh, teardrop, almost like a little teardrop panel on the side. So you could give it a pop of colour and, and make this black just on the sides and then that's going to set off the handle really nicely also. So I just, I grabbed that out because I thought, ooh, yes, gunmetal, that's going to work really well. We've also got gunmetal in the little trinket, little teeny weeny trinket purse frames. So you could also make a matching one or you know get this and look see you can you could actually fussy cut down some of the motifs into the trinket purse. So I've I have put that under the banner tonight. That's a little gunmetal one so it's easy to find. I think as a set, I mean just lovely and these patterns come Sorry, the frame comes with the pattern and you can make it as a little round purse or you can make it longer and perhaps with a fabric like this you'd really want to make a longer one so that you could pick up oops, some of this um, design. That would be lovely. So, <laughs> oh no. Oh, Sylvia, if Rob hasn't seen that, I will, um, <laughs> that's really funny. Where's the other cat with the bell? The other cat's been banished. After her behaviour on, um, what was it? Oh, an applique sampler this week. Oh, <laughs> she was, when the cat starts playing with the sashing like a toy, it's time for her to leave the bench. She was a naughty girl. Oh, I, I still want this. I still want it. I still want it. Sorry, you're going to have to wait a second longer because I want to show you this. Just, you just, just see again what it looks like as a background. So, this is our multicolored. Remember this beautiful thing with all the different colors in the one fabric? 
and look at it with that. Can you see that there? I might have to hold it up for you. They're heavy. As I bring these ones in from overseas, they come on the bigger bolts. We buy two big bolts instead of three small ones. There we go. So if I hold that up there, everything that I would want to do in terms of appliquing flowers, whether it be um, pansies, just joey roses, I've got foliage, I've got forget-me-nots, I've got lavender, everything that I'd want to do is in this to go on this. Emma and I, I'm not going to say wasted because I'd never say that about creative time that Emma and I have together, but there was half an hour that just vanished the other day when we were talking about that and we never got, we never got that half hour back. It, it, it was gone absolutely gone which is why we were still running around when we got to got to see you at two o'clock right we pop that one back up um there there we go stay stay all right way back when in may last year i went out for the day with margaret and margaret's coming down and coming on the show as well before our weekend so you'll get to see it um on the show but what 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 so I got distracted again hello Jenny I'm still working on your club uh, glasses cake oh yes rosemary yes yes and yes the bag set and the bow clutch would be gorgeous in it oh yeah this is all the time in the day I'm sorry I'm not even going to try and put them back up for now I'm going to pop those over here um, way back when in May last year I went out for the day shopping with Margaret and when we go shopping we go to our distributors and we visit people and fabrics and, and do all the um, secret squirrel undercover stuff hello Ricky oh Ruth you're here too how are things in WA and you're letting us all in now that will be exciting and, um, good evening Chris um, and we went to a distributor that I hadn't been to before and I fell in love with a sample they had of this and I had to cut a bit off today oh what a shame this has to be my bit because I couldn't get it to sit nicely on the wall without the writing being upside down so I fell in love with a swatch of this and they said to me we'll have to order it for you and it will be printed to order and I went, oh, okay fine and I ordered it and it has only just arrived I don't know if I remember how much uh, it was going to be a meter needless to say you'll be buying this a little bit like buying your cork because it's expensive so I'm selling it in 10 centimeter increments which is $5, I'll let you do the math. But it has been printed to order for us in, 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 in France. It's, it's French linen and it's, and it's just, it's lovely and it's gorgeous. You need to get that cat under control. I can't believe you can't get that cat under control. Jin, off you go. What is she? She's just out of control tonight. Have you locked her in? No. Okay, you can go and get her, it's all right. No one can see you, Robbie. So, oh, there's a cat outside. Did you hear that? Quick, this is prime time television. Get your cat and go. <laughs> you can shut the door. Oh, no, you can't. So have a look. Can you see that? And look, we've got our bit. Look at our selvage. Whoa. But, all right, seriously, it is expensive, but it is beautiful. Um, Handwoven linen. It's been stamped onto with all of this gorgeous manuscript writing. And I suppose in my defence, with the price of it as well, is it's extra wide. So it's 54 centimetres wide. So if you compare it to using something specialist like cork, that's $6 for 10 centimetres and it's only 24 inches, this is double the width for five. So if you sort of do me a favour and try and put that in perspective... But I love it. I just, I mean, I just want to make cushions out of it. But as a medium to use as a background, I think it's going to be 
really, really nice. So let's just do this quickly again. Because what, what happens is, oh, I got a bit creased, sorry girls. This on this, it just, it just pops. Okay, so I can, I don't even know if you can see those colours well on here. But now I want to do my little birdies on this and I'm going to aim for the areas where there isn't that much writing going on. So you know what I might do? I might even just sit one little bird there and then I might sit a couple of my little hearts down here and it's going to get that kind of botanical look to it. You imagine little pansies over the top of this. So even if it's not birds, maybe I need to do some pansies yeah, for next week. Look. Oh, oh. It doesn't work. It's really interesting. It doesn't work with cool colours. There's got to be warm. The cool ones don't work. So if I threw a bright mint green or a bright red on, it doesn't, it doesn't work. So that's what I want to do. Now, the nice thing about this as well is because it is a woven linen, go away Robert, we are not putting hot pink on my toile. Um, the other thing, because it's an open weave linen, it's going to be beautiful to do stitcheries through. So again, if you don't want to applique over it, these just get out your beautiful deep red um, embroidery stitches and just do these in stitchery, just in stitchery over the top. If you do, I'm going to, I'm going to say this out loud, I'm from Chandler's Cottage because we don't stock it. If you're like me and you've got your own little personal stash of French general fabrics with that lovely, beautiful, dark signature red that they've got, that's going to work on this as well. If you've got an old stash of Debbie Mum red, it's going to work. So it's that really dark, warm red that's going to work with it. But I love, I love these colours. I think it's sort of, you know, I'm kind of thinking I want to go quite French. French garden. So these onto this or onto the onto the Michael Miller one, I think is going to be stunning. Obviously black is going to work. So if I just set all of this aside, I'm going to fold this. Look how big the design is on it, will you? It's just huge. Throw that on the floor. Just so you can see them together. So there's the black with it. Really nice. Um, I did get out, oh I've just seen something else, I forgot to show you. I did get out the black handles again just so we could have a look. Now these are 1950 at the moment but please remember that um, as I said the handles have to go up, the latest shipment has got to go up and we go wholesale in two weeks time as well so there'll be no more, no more um, little specials on our handles because we'll be selling them to other shops around Australia as well so no more have to be good have to be good okay so I'll pop this piece back up oh what a shame <laughs> and I just want to talk about techniques again as well so I'll pop that under there what else do we have oh yeah so we've got our prize for tonight I've got my numbers written down this is tonight's prize uh, that I'm going to draw that for orders that were placed from the start of the last show up to uh, one minute to eight tonight. So this is our new gold pack. And um, this pack was really, I'll just roll this out of the way, girls, let me get that one out of the way. This new gold pack was really inspired by, we'll talk about that too, and that this, which is this beautiful new paisley that's come in. So I have listed that separately tonight as well. Just stunning. I mean, you know. Canvas Studio are owned by Benetix Fabrics. And if you see Canvas Studio on the end of a roll, you might you might shudder a little bit and that would be look at that. <laughs> it sometimes it just works under the lights, doesn't it? Sometimes it doesn't. Um you would be forgiven for having a little bit of a shudder. They used to not have a great wrap, particularly for metallics. They used to do a lot of the, the cheap and cheerful Christmas fabrics. 
a long time ago, but then they got bought out by Benetix. So Benetix now use the name pretty much just to categorize their ranges and you know and to have a little bit of variety. So they're sort of they're sort of like a different company, but they're not. So it's Canvas for Benetix, and they. You know, we may not be able to afford all of that jewellery, girls, but you can have your gold in fabric and what more could you want? So you can see that this new pack starts down here with the darkest one is this paisley and then works its way all the way up into my yellow gold dragons up here. Now, while the dragons are a bigger print, as you know, for fussy cutting, I love people or encourage people to use them just as a tonal print as well because they do a lot of interest and you know it, if you use it in little bits it is just a tonal fabric so that all works together now the other pack just so you can see if you have already bought the gold pack that's called gold there it is there and this one is called antique so no that one's antique sorry sorry this one's called old gold so this is the new one that's old gold and I just wanted to hold this up and show you that if you have this pack is completely different to what's in the first one so if you are collecting your golds up um, then then none of them none of them repeat so you've got 10 10 centimeter strips in there because you know me gold so the other way to do your doves in love is to use these and put them onto black completely different look but that on a bag with this as the actual bag and a black panel with this. Be very, very nice. So this is one of our prizes tonight, so I'll leave that out there. Um, and of course, of course, of course, I got out um, the Liberty Pack because this pack will also work really nicely, most of these colours, on our um, on our new Michael Miller and the Twelve. Probably more on the Michael Miller. Let me just get it down again. We'll just, we'll just have a quick peruse because all of the uh, Wilshire shadows that we do stock at the moment, I think there's more new ones to come. I'm trying to get the print up the right way. So let's just we'll just have a little bit of a we'll just audition in, shall we? So we can see. So I well, that's a winner. That's a win. Not the grey. I'm not even going to kid you. Not the blue, it's too pale. Uh, borderline, oh yes, that's fine. So the greens are all good. See, this is what I mean about red. Look at that on it. That's good. That's really nice. Nice dark cherry red or a rust red is going to be the go. Not not the green. Uh, I think you can, you could, no. <laughs> okay. No, I'm not even going to kid you. So. Here you go. And look, honestly, these should work, shouldn't they? Because they are, a in a way, they are a reflection of the two that I've popped in that little limited pack tonight. So you can see that, you know, they should work because those two work. Um, and not the blue. So you can see what I mean. But some of them will work. So have a look through uh, your pack if you've got one. And you'll see these three... Um, under the Wiltshire, under Wiltshire, under the Liberty fabrics, or if you have got your Wiltshire pack, then you, you know, you're going to be able to use at least four of them on these fabrics if you want to. I do, I do like these packs. Now, putting all of that aside, of course, you could make your Doves in Love a little diagram with any of these, and you know, they're just really, really pretty. In fact, you could run these three over the dark blue so these are they're the perfect little prints to use and because they're tonal they're going to give you the opportunity to do some embellishment with beads or embroidery with them as well okay I'll we'll pop that back up there and this is our scarf this is the scarf I'm wearing so this will be our prize from uh, 8 p.m. tonight until uh, midnight Sunday so that's the one that I've got on and we haven't got any more I didn't know there were two left I don't they must have been up on the new website at some stage but 
it's gone now and they were wedged in between what they wedged in between oh some of my pink and uh, pink and teal waratah ones and what do you mean the, is the gold pack already sold out i've just done the gold pack ah uh, yes jill there will be more yes hurry just done it what are you all doing to me it's just done i will definitely get that done i can change it over tonight so i will pop that up straight after the show all it means is i'll allocate some more and um i will cut them all tomorrow that's fine tomorrow afternoon tomorrow afternoon you'll have till tomorrow afternoon because i gotta have that meeting in the morning all right um two other well the other way that i wanted to talk about and Melissa's here, uh, I wanted to have a talk about pre-shaping again um, with your uh, polyfuse uh, because these guys, the batiks are going to be fantastic to iron on with steamer seam and then blanket stitch on by hand or machine the way that I'm doing my blue ones. So uh, one of our beautiful big rolls, new rolls of steamer seam and we mentioned last week because you seem to be buying a lot of it. Uh, it worked out a little bit more economical and easier to get the wider, the wider bolt. So if you're going, it's more, it's because it's wider. So when you're buying it, just keep that now in, um, keep that in mind. It is, yeah, it is now half a meter or half a yard, 45 centimeters instead of 30 centimeters wide. So you're getting 50 percent more. So just just remember that. So steam the seam, as you know, is fantastic and it sticks uh, and it's sticky when you've peeled off the paper so you can sort of position it and have a really good play before you stick it down with the iron. So the batiks are going to be really good for that. With some of the other fabrics though, you just need to keep in mind um, what the colour is on the back and how much they're going to fray because if you decide to stitch the raw edge with Monopoly that we will go through on Tuesday, if you get really close to the edge with your stitch, when you go down into the fabric, it can kick up the edge of the fabric. And if you've got white on the back and it's prone to fraying, you can get a little white edge that shows. And if you're on a dark background, it's not a good look. So just keep that in mind uh, as you're working out your applique technique that you're going to use. The girls in the applique sampler, they're all over this. They know what they're doing. They sure do. Don't you? Yes, you do. Just nod. Just nod, Sharon. Just nod. <laughs> um, all right, so I want to cut a little bit of this just so we can see how it's going to come up because this this stuff, this stuff does, you know, deserves a little bit of attention. Look at it. And we'll, we'll, we'll just have a quick little play and see how it's going to look on our Michael Miller toile. And I'll show you what I mean. It, it doesn't mean that this isn't a beautiful fabric. It doesn't mean that it's not a good quality. It's just the style of the fabric. That it's important to just have a little of a look before you invest a lot of time into a particular technique. I still haven't shown you. But these, I get those down so I don't forget. In there. You go, Sharon. She's nearly finished the fan. Woohoo! Okay. Um, I might have to call for my handy assistant. Robbie? Yeah. Would you do me a favour and come around and stick on the iron for me? Let's have a look at this. So we've got lots of different colours going on here, and I need to decide what colours I want my birds to be. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab my transfer paper because that's just going to make my life quick and easy to transfer the shape of my birds on. Um, you know, yes, you know about that. I've shown you that before. Good stuff. Okay, so we've got a white side, which is the side that the chalk's on. So, thanks, John. Stop fiddling. You can't help yourself. You can't move stuff. It's hanging. No, but, no, but, no, but. Yes, no. however, no, but. 
Nobat. Nobat. I have Nobat. Let's just iron this out. Um, I am on the hunt at the moment, folks, for a stand to set these little irons in because I love it. I love it to bits, but it's light, so they can they do fall off unless you've got a little cradle. I know you're all going to tell me you've got a cradle now, haven't you? And I'm the only one that doesn't. Would that be right? Okay, let's have a look. Oh, it's a tough choice, isn't it? Where do we put a bird? So I could work through here. I've got blue, blue, purple, violet. Um, I've only popped one of these up tonight as a feature product, but if you put in the word gradations, there are three different types, three different colour things that you can get. I think, so I've got to think, I've got to think ahead, don't I, because... I need a wing later. Mm. Mm. Okay, didn't think that through. I'm going here. Right, so if I want it to sit about here, I'm going to pop my transfer paper underneath like that. And I'm going to press down firmly with a pen that I don't have. I'll use a friction. That's all right, then I can iron it off later, that's a bonus. Okay, just, just draw around. So I've got the graphite or the transfer paper underneath and I'm pressing down hard, so it's just like using an old fashioned carbon paper. I might pop my little dot in like that and I'll also just do a couple of marks for the positioning of the wing so that when I come back later and pop the wing over the top, there you go, it's on. Okay, so then it's on like that and oh and he's going to change colour. So that's going to be rather gorgeous. So that's one way to do it. Now, uh, if you are a needle turner, that's all you need. So you'll actually cut this out now, you've got the design on the front and that's where you want it if you are doing needle turn applique. So I would come through and cut this out with scissors that are not paper scissors. And I would um, very ladylike make myself a cup of tea and um, I would maybe a dab of glue say so maybe like I'm not going to do it but I will a dab of glue to hold in place and then tack it at least a quarter of an inch in from the line so that I can needle turn under my seam allowance without taking the tacking out and it would be the most enjoyable relaxing 15 minutes I will need to do a few little clips uh, into my inner curves in here so that as I go I'm going to be able to turn these turn these in so that's my little shape and he's going to look really lovely on my Michael Miller 12 now that's for those that love to needle turn if you're looking at me going it's not going to happen Lisa then we move to polyfuse. So let's go again and grab the, it's here, I know it's here, the polyfuse. And we'll go again. And as I said, this, if you're not a needle turner, then this is the best option for you uh, to pre-shape because the polyfuse you actually leave in, it doesn't come out, it stays. It is a water soluble, it will stay in there, it's acid free and um, just over time it will wear away. So, uh, you know, have a look, read up on it. It's really, really good stuff. So now this time round, here's my little birdie, I'll sit you over here. This time round, I'm going to trace off my bird onto the polyfuse, but 
This is like when you're using a Vlizafix or, or steamer seam, any of those adhesives. The way that it all works, by the time the process is finished, you'll end up with the reverse. So if I actually want the his friend that's going to sit the other way, then I need to use the same side because when we're all done and dusted, this is going to be flipped over. So let's go this way. You do realise, don't you, sometimes I just demo this to you because then I've sort of kick-started off a project for myself. But I really, you know, that this multicoloured fabric on that Michael Miller, it's going to keep me awake at night. I don't know why I'm drawing on the wing because I'm using a Frixion pen and it's going to come off. Okay. So now we'll cut this out, and this will give us our final shape, like we do when we're doing English paper piecing. Okay. Probably would have been better with my paper scissors, not my good ones. And one of the reasons is these are so sharp. If you were a little bit blunter, I would have had more control. So there's my little birdie cut out. And now we're going to iron him. Anne-Marie Selway, are you saving me? I have a mat, you've all got it, right, okay. Oh, yeah, yes, however, I nearly said yeah, but again. Yes, however, Miss Anne-Marie, what if you've got steam in it when you lay it down and it's, does it, did you like that? Does it make a difference? I don't know. Not sure. Okay. Put the board around this way so you can see better. Now, we'll go back to our fabric. And we really do, don't we, want about the same spot. I know what you're going to say. You're going to want me now to go off and do one needle turn and one polyfuse and pick the difference. I'm, I know where you're going. I, I'm just sitting the first bird over the top so I can see the position I was on that gradual colour change. Like that. So your polyfuse is going to iron on. Isn't that wonderful stuff? Uh, if you're thinking about English paper piecing, you, yeah, you can, you can do, you can think that. Just a little bit of a warning with it. Um, it's okay for smallish hexagons. Once you start playing with things like uh, these shapes, where you've got holes and you need precision, really precision corners, it's a little bit soft. And you can imagine that this was one of your corners here as you fold over your fabric, you, that corner can be folding with you. So you just, I, I find it's okay, and I know a lot of um, people use uh, use this stuff that stays in, or you know, the, the polyfuse that stays in, for hexagons, and hexagons are fine, because all of the edges touch when you're joining them together. But for these more sort of complex shapes that I use, um, it's not, I did have a go, I had a really good go when I started doing octagons and I just couldn't get the precision corners anymore. But for this stuff, it's great. Okay, so we just whiz around here. So again, I'm cutting out with my quarter inch seam allowance and then I will put my glasses on, which are probably all fogged up on my head and I'll cut just cut in ready for gluing my inner corners. They sound satisfying these scissors, don't they? Okay, so they're all in. I'm not going to cut any of the outer ones because you can get more points than you bargain for. I'll set it down here and We'll just glue these down. Now while I'm doing this, just one other little, just one other little thought. I'll 
bet you, I bet you I haven't bought it. This happened the other day, didn't it? I came in here without my, my orange stick. Yeah. I've got a pencil here, we'll use this. Just another little thought with these birds. I think they are the perfect little bird shape for uh, doing felt birds. So if you love doing birds, um, for Christmas decorations or anything like that, these are going to be fantastic. So you can see I'm going around and I'm not getting, oh yeah, that's not too bad. Hey Robbie, he's gone. Handsome, in my, in my, um, how do I describe it without going myself? In the box that's up on the back right hand corner of my desk. There are manicure wooden sticks, you know like cuticle yeah. sticks. Can you see if you can see one there? They should be there. Because that is what Maria Waters taught us to use. And there is just no beating it. Um, watch your glue sticks girls too in the sun because it's been really warm. <gasps> Thank you. How funny. It's a critical tool. It's got nothing to do with my nails. These are just the best for this because the flat, look at that, the flat edge just works so well. Fantastic. So this is going to give you um, shape that all you need to do is applique down. Now again felt birds so you would just cut two out, pop your padding in the middle, some of that thin pallen, um, top stitch them together around the edge, embellish and then you could pop on the same you know pop your felt wings on as well. The other thing that I'd really like to try actually is bagging, have a go at bagging them out. Remember we just bagged out the circles and the dragon print the other day? We could have a go at that, couldn't we? I reckon you could easily bag out the bird. Um, yeah. That's going to need glue. There we go. So this method just eliminates, you know, all those issues with fraying, not being able to needle turn in a nice curve or not wanting to or not wanting to spend all day doing it. I'll just give this a little press. If you do, and you probably will, get a few lumps and bumps on your curves, you're going to be able to pull those in really nicely with your needle when you do your little slip stitch. So when you're slip stitching on, you'll bring your needle up on the curve, up on the curve there, and if you've got a point sticking out, you'll just be able to pull it back in when you pop your needle back in. So if we have a look at these guys, I don't know if that camera is still flickering, but there's that one that way. And that one's going to be the one that I needle turn going the other way. So yeah, it is flickering, sorry. So that's for the birds. And then I think for the wings, I might actually go down to the orange so I get a really good contrast over the top. If it, if it looks a little bit too much, I can always do a little bit of feather embellishment with some stem stitching purple. And then I've got these gorgeous greens on here. So they've got the mint green through to an olive that I'll be able to use for the, the leaves that are on it. Um, if you're in the applique sampler club, we'll be going through really, really small stuff, uh, little motives and things using that when we get together on the next Facebook club page day. It was going to be 10 o'clock on Saturday, but I've had to move it out. I'm sorry, girls. It's going to be 2 o'clock on Sunday. Just things that need to happen, I've got to get done Saturday. So 2 o'clock Sunday, and I will pop up a note on the club for you as well so that you know. So I just want to get that, I just want to get that Michael Miller down again and have a look. So we'll put this here. Oops.
so it's just again it's all that warm color that works so that's going to work really well and you can see that when I add these colors in with them it's just going to be it's just going to be really good fun um, and of course you know the color is is a little different between the two the linen the linen heaven the linen uh, is slightly darker so Ooh, I think it's better I think the pinks I might I might find some maybe one of the other gradations might work better on the Michael Miller I will have a play or you can have a look but see that it just pops on there fun fun what about this bit yep that works too so um, I hope I hope that's a bit of fun for you oh yes um scarves sorry so we have this we have this um, cycle that goes round and round and round that I put this scarf up and people miss out and then I order more and then we catch up and then then we have some left over. Now, and this is the last time. We are not going back to this scarf again. Now, I've put them on special tonight, so they're under the banner. And then we've got what we've got left. We've got left, I think there's about five of them left. And then that's it. I'm going to get new ones. All right. The last of the art gallery scarves. That's it. I'm done. Now, what else did I get to show you that I've completely forgotten? I've done that. I've got that. Uh, no, we're going to talk about the black and white again on Tuesday. Oh, yes, with your, I, there was a couple of other things um, I just put under the banner tonight because I think you might need them. So I popped under um, adhesive non-woven interfacing. That is there if you wish to back your Michael Miller fabric to reinforce it before you pop it in a hoop to do embroidery. That's where I was going with that. So if you are doing some embroidery onto your birds, onto wings or straight onto the fabric, I popped it up there for that reason. And I think that that's going to be the best one to use to give you that little bit of oomph if you need it. And the other thing that I popped up was uh, weft. A lot of you know it is whisper weft and this is the birch one that we, that we stock. It's exactly the same thing. So this is weft. So this is the woven adhesive stabilizer. This is going to be brilliant if you are doing a lot of work onto your French toile and it works really well with it because this is more of an open weave linen as opposed to a super tight cotton. So this is going to work better with the woven weft that's also got a bit of give in it and so it won't sort of all crease up and everything and you're still going to get that lovely flow of the linen. Um, but you've got stabilizer behind it. So they're both up. I popped up Black Magic as well, just so you can find the black really well if you want it to go with um, the fabric. And I'm going to get my phone. And... No, I'm going to get my phone now, Fiona. I'm going to do it now. I'm going to do it now. That's not doing. I'm going to get my phone and, um, and bring that up. And the piece of paper's here. So, as I was saying, just while I do this, and I'm not going to lose you, am I? Have I forgotten anything? Hello, Wendy. You're here too. I don't... How do I print it? Everyone, help me, help me. E-F-Y-E. Is it if? If? I don't know where you are, but welcome to Chandler's Cottage. Hello, Vicky, Marilyn, Carolyn, Helen, Sylvia's still here. Jude's here. Janet's here. Oh, Linda Eaton's in the building. Hello Liz, doing the numbers now I promise. Hi Suzanne, so we do the random number thing again. Um, yes, so Chandler's Cottage, 2 o'clock Sunday afternoon. Uh, and then we, uh, what are we doing after that? Then we'll definitely be here at 2 o'clock on uh, Tuesday afternoon. And we also, oh Quilter's Life, Chuckney was today, there's other stuff happening tomorrow. And my phone is now. Robbie! <laughs> oh, no, I've got it now. I have, no, I have no reception. So what you do, if you ever need to do this, uh, and we will be doing this at our retreat, no doubt, um, is you put in random generator and it brings it up. If you have 
any phone reception. Here we go. All right, so we put in the minimum number, which is, so we'll do the ascent hill. We've got two, two lots to do. So remember, I didn't actually do them Tuesday because we had a lot of trouble with the internet. So I have two, okay, um, these are our original purple essential packs. These are the last two of the original, original version, and now we've got a new one that's up on the website. We're on our third, third story. So we've got two of these to do, and we need to pop these numbers in first. Um, so we're going from three, four, seven, three, and we're going to three, five, two, two, done. And then you push the generate button, and then I turn it around so you can see I'm not rigging it, and it is number 3522. So if you are order number 3522, you are going to win one of these packs, and I need to write that down. 3522, and then I push it again, and our other number is going to be 3504. I feel like I'm the Tats Girl on a Saturday night on Channel 7. 35. And then we'd have to do that whole, what is it, clothing buy. Because some of the time I look and I go, who did that? Um, clothing buy. Now, the other one is the antique pack. And so the antique pack is the one that ran through up until Jill Chisholm was last one into order just before the show tonight. I saw that, Jill. We can't escape. And I'm not hiding it from anyone. Okay, so this pack is from 10 o'clock Tuesday to 1 minute to 8 o'clock tonight. So we pop these numbers in. Do you realize this is just all making me feel tired because we're going to fill all these orders uh, from when I get back from the meeting tomorrow till I finish tomorrow night. Could be a late one. I love filling orders for you though. I do. It's, it's great. It's just lovely. All right, random generate. Here we go. So the next one is... Um, and supplementary number, <laughs> no, I'm only joking. 3572, there you go. So they are our numbers for our winners tonight. And then um, you're all in the game now to win the scarf on the next one. Does that sound like a plan? It's a plan, it's a plan. Let me write this down, 3572. Okay, so I will just, if you've got an order in the system, I will pop your price pack in with your order. Well, of course you do. What am I saying? Oh, from this lot through, and not the one before. If you have a purple pack, I'll just stick it in the mail for me. If you've, for you, if you've got an order in, of course you have for the gold one, it will go in with your pack. If it's not there, don't panic. I will just, it will come out separately. It will just depend on how your pack comes together. And then uh, one of these scarves for the next one. If you've ordered more than once um, from the Tuesday show and from this one, and as I said, I'm going to be filling orders from about 2 o'clock tomorrow, so please have any extra orders in by 2 o'clock if you've got one in. Uh, then I will combine your orders together for you. We check everyone, and if there is a discount there for you with postage, we will pop a credit back to you for what you save on postage. And just remember what I said to you, because it, it happens all the time that people then ring and go, oh, I forgot the cotton, and the mail's gone, and they need cotton desperately, and they're paying postage on, you know, one reel of cotton and it's just sad so just remember to check all that stuff and make sure you're happy and we will get your orders out for you absolutely as quickly as we can and congratulations to everyone now we do have to remember to say a very very special well wishes to all of our friends from Sydney up that are just experiencing the most challenging times I can't even I can't even contemplate what they're going through with this flood and this rain. So our warmest wishes to all of you. Please keep in mind if you are from Sydney up, even if you're not in a flood area and we've got posts going out to you, Australia Post are used to dealing with natural disasters in Australia. They will be on it, but it may take a little bit longer for your mail to get you. You might say that it's see that it's on hold, a little bit like what we went through earlier on with uh, lockdowns and COVID. If you can see the number on your tracking, it's there, it's not lost, it's just had to wait a bit, a bit longer to get through of roads and blocks and things like that. So we'll do our best to get them out really quick, but uh, yeah, just a bit of patience or, you know, check in with us to make sure if you're really worried that everything is okay. 
all right but we will get them yeah i know fiona i really feel for them too and you know it's really hard as a quilter because you're your, your first instinct is to start making quilts to donate and things like that, but particularly with floods, just don't want anything like that at the moment. Things have really got to clean up and dry out before we can send them up. And a very, very special, um, of course, best wishes to, to Cass, who's the member of our team that lives in northern Sydney that does looks after all your um, Quilters Life membership and does all our beautiful graphics and things for us. She had to race off and get the kids early today, so they're probably going to be isolated for a few days. Um, where they are so we send all our best wishes to her and you and I hope her satellite doesn't go down so we can finish some patterns off this week have a fantastic weekend I will see the Chandler's Cottage Girls on um, Sunday afternoon if you've got any questions send them through an email um, and I will get to them first thing early tomorrow morning or when I get back from catching up with the girls about our soiree tomorrow afternoon all right Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you next week. All right. Thank you. Bye.